Steve, we saw an excellent performance, not an excellent fight, not an exciting fight necessarily over the weekend, but an excellent performance. Went the way most people, I'd say, thought it would. Um, I think we both predicted that Devin Haney would come out on top on points, uh, but it was a bit of a landslide. I think I read earlier that uh, Regis Progre only managed to land, I think it was less or fewer than 40 shots in total over the 12 yes. rounds. I mean, that's just crazy. Um, in what was seen by many, not as a 50-50 fight, but certainly as two world-class operators going up against each other. Progre only previously beaten in a razor-thin uh, tight one against Josh Taylor, of course, who's wasted no time in calling out Devin Haney. I'm sure um, people will be aware. What, what did you make of the fight? What are your key reflections on it? Yeah, great win, first of all, for Devin Haney, as you said. I expected it to be a lot closer, but with Haney coming out um, at, at the end of it, Haney's a lot like Shakur Stevenson, in a way. I think they both shut down the opponent's offen offence and make them fight their fight. That's what Haney did on Saturday night, from what I saw. Progre was trying. He just could not launch any attacks. There was just a fear of falling in, getting countered mm. repeatedly. He stood still in round three, got dropped. Time is the subtle thief of youth, and it just caught up on Regis Progre in the end. Uh, all that was missing was the stoppage for me, that punctuation mark on the performance. Could have come in round 10. I thought, you know what? The foot might come down from Haney here. Progre looks pretty beaten up. The face was smashed. Shutting him out on all three scorecards is a nice close second, though. Maybe a bit risk-averse. Some would say negative. I thought Haney did exactly what he needed to do. The extra five pounds made him look like the bigger guy. Uh, Progre looked a little bit fleshy, just wasn't able to do anything with him, did not expect it to be as one-sided as that, and it sets up the future fights just lovely. Yeah, I agree. Um, Haney was everything he needed to be. You know, If it wasn't an exciting fight, it wasn't because of Haney. He did everything he needed to do, not just to win the fight, but to guarantee he'd get the decision to dominate the fight. If, if anything, it's down to Regis, especially once he started to fall behind, to push the fight and to push the pace and to close the gap better and to have better timing. And Steve, your what was your your quote just there? Uh, time is the subtle thief of youth, um, which has got one too many THs in the sentence for me <laughs> to, to say eloquently. But yeah, I mean, it's an interesting one because Progre, not only the older man, but has been inactive, didn't look great in his last fight. And it's easy to say all this in hindsight, but against Zaria, um, looked pretty poor. Um, and now... Haney, in the flush of youth, has stayed active, has not looked to always be the A-side, famously. You know, stayed active, fought Cambosos twice in Australia, dominated enough on a way turf that he was always confident he'd get the decision as well. Great team around him. And maybe now he can start to make some serious money as an A-side in the promotion. Because I don't know where you put him in your pound-for-pound -pound list, but he's certainly in my top three now. Um, and pushing the other guys in there as well. Who do we... Actually, let me go to some of the comments before I ask you who we want to see Haney fight next because we don't want to neglect the chat. Um, let's have a look. DB Cooper, who else? Uh, great fight from Haney. If you love boxing, it's a joy to watch. I like Haney now, despite all the hate he gets. He's done everything that's asked of him and far more. If only others were active as him. Couldn't agree more. Uh, still, I rise. Devin Haney is a really good talent. Uh, Remeni Mode XD. Haney... Where is it? Haney fought world champion, mate. Stop saying he's cherry picking. I don't think anyone said that, did they? Oh, oh, he deleted his comment. Aha. Right, okay, fair enough. Um, still I rise, but Haney is mad corny when he tries to act like he's from the street and he's hard. Yeah, but a lot of boxers feel that kind of unspoken pressure to act like you've got this hard scrabble background, you know. I've got a hard scrabble background and I'm about as hard as a sponge, you know what I mean? So, you know, you can't always judge it based on that anyway. Um, but there is... I blame the Rocky movies in part and, and some of the other boxers that have come up and been successes, but there's always going to be that element, I think. Um, still, I rise this. Haney was homeschooled and always had money. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if homeschooling makes you posh or middle class necessarily. Might not make you that clever either, although Haney clearly is. Um, Devin Haney went to 140 to fight a smaller man with small arms. That is a cherry pick looking for the weak link, says Pitbully. So he's not only deleted his original comment, but he's apparently doubled down on it. Um, I, I don't class it as a cherry pick. As I alluded to earlier, sorry, Rolly, you're about to catch another stray. Rolly Romero is a reigning world champion at £140. Surely if Haney wanted to cherry pick, 
you'd fancy him very, very strongly against Romero, far more than you would against or would have against Regis Progre. I don't think Progre is a cherry pick. Naturally, bigger man, despite short arms and stuff. He's a big guy, Progre. He's not small. You know, gave Josh Taylor all he could handle. Came through that tournament looking like a million dollars as well, um, the WBSS. I don't think that's a cherry pick at all. Um, and Haney's then fought Camboso. So, yeah, you would think he'd, he'd outskill, but he went to his home turf twice to beat him. So, yeah, I think cherry picking's a bit unfair. Um, who else we got? DB Cooper one says, Sandor Martin makes sense next. It would be three southpaws in a row, get him out of the way. Yeah, but Sandor Martin's not going to get him loads of money, is he? You know, that's the problem. He's, he's kind of all, all risk, very limited reward. Um, Brian Minter said, but all this said uh, is beating Cambosos twice, arguably losing to Loma and schooling Haney enough to warrant higher pound for pound place in the current climate. For me, I think you should judge pound for pound on achievements and official results. So I don't think you can say, well, I think that Loma did enough to beat him, so I'm going to mark him down as a result. I think the official result says he beat Loma. I had him beating Loma, actually, but I don't think that should come into it. Um, and I think it was a close fight that could have gone either way regardless. So I think that result gets Loma to two wins over Cambosos, given the location as well, and then stepping up a weight class to fight someone who, as I keep saying, had only lost once, and that was a very, very close decision against the then on form peak Josh Taylor. I, I have him up there, and it's also the manner of the victories. You know, he whitewashed um, Pro Grey, he whitewashed Cambosos, and he at least had a very close fight with Loma, depending on how you see the result. Um, Ramoni World XD says the fact he performed well against Loma at weight, he's fully weight drained out, he's still drained at 140, shows how good he is. Exactly that. But Steve, getting back to what I was going to ask you before I decided to go to the chat, what who would you like to see Haney fight next? And who do you think he could fight to maybe silence some of these detractors who say he's a cherry picker? Yeah, just before I address that, I'll address the cherry pick. Maybe not a cherry pick, but you could argue it's probably a clever pick. Maybe they had a little look at Pro Grey and thought he's not the biggest at the weight, uh, the the short arms, the falling in. You know, obviously you're not cherry picking a WBC champion when you're moving up, but they probably looked at him and thought he's beatable. Didn't look great mm. against Zario, went to the well against Taylor. So a clever pick rather than a cherry pick, I would say. I'll, I'll give them that one. Uh, as for what's next, wouldn't mind seeing Haney against Ryan Garcia, Tiafimo Lopez. Realistically, back-to-back -back fights. He's fought Cambosos twice in the year, in the one year. Lomachenko, like you said, I thought he lost that fight, but we have to go with the official pick. I'm not going to dismiss him from pound for pounds based on my thoughts. He won officially, according to the judges. So we have to give him that. Lomachenko and now uh, Regis Programme one year. Tiafimo is supposed to be fighting Subriel Matias. They're saying in March. Then, you know, that's obviously not official at the moment. So we might have to rule him out. Garcia will probably fight Rolly Romero uh, if Rolly's injury free. The way I sort of pitched uh, Garcia as a B-side for somebody else, Romero can be like a good C-side for somebody else. He can jump into to face Roy and Garcia on pay-per-view and people would probably accept that. You may have to be like a triple threat match for it to be a C-side. <laughs> Possibly. Maybe we buy the C-side. They'll do it at the Bay Area again. <laughs> that, that, that's a good point. I a C side, B-side against C-side by the C-side. They, they could maybe call that one. I don't think that would catch on to That's that. something only you can say without losing your, your track there. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd like to see any of those fights, to be honest. Ryan Garcia, I would strongly favour Haney in that fight, but commercially, I'm sure it would do great numbers. Um, Shakur Stevenson has been talked about a lot. They both seem confident, albeit friendly, with each other. Um, we need to see Shakur Stevenson step up. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see him maybe do something like um, we've already seen Devin Haney do, because although I'm sure they're around the same age, it seems like Haney is the much more mature seasoned fighter because of the, the recent couple of years he's had. And I'd like to see Stevenson fight guys like that more more than, you know, a, a, the lost Santos and, and the, the people he's been winning with before. Even a Frank Martin, who through no fault of his own, no fault of Shakur's own, pulled out of their fight. I still want to see Shakur tested at a much higher level than that. You know, we saw him um, in his breakout fight, uh, super featherweight, look amazing against Jamel Herring. And since then, he hasn't taken those additional steps. And I, I would very much would have liked to have seen that. Why, and maybe I'm missing something, but why is no one talking about Haney going up further uh, in weight and fighting Terence Crawford? 
Why is that not something that people seem to be discussing? Is it because we expect Crawford to move up to 154? Quite possibly, yeah. That's a, that's a good point. Haney himself said afterwards he might move up to 147. I think he was just putting in the feelers out there like, look, I've got options here. I don't have to wait around for you. Like, I can move up to 147. It was like a bit of a veiled threat, maybe. I think he has business at 140, even though he probably still is a little bit tight at the weight. Someone mentioned to me about Tiafimo Lopez moving up to fight Terence Crawford. Mm. And I thought, I'm not sure about that. And then the more I thought about it, I thought, well, if Crawford's going up, uh, you know, perceivably to fight Canelo, then why shouldn't Tiafimo Lopez or Haney move up to fight Crawford? It's not beyond the realms of possibility. I think it's the fact that Crawford feels like he has business at a higher weight now, either the Spence rematch or Canelo, rather than theor looking down, quote unquote, at these other guys, even though there would be tests for him. Maybe that's why people aren't uh, picking up on that. Yeah, quite possibly. But I mean, that's that's a daring to be great move, isn't it? But it's also low key, a one where you can't really lose. Mm -hmm. You move up, you get beaten by a big 147 pounder, which Crawford is these days. So, well, the weight was just too big for me too early in my career. A bit like um, Canelo Mayweather in that the intelligence and the ring craft was too much that early in his career. So you could say that. And, and if you win and you're the first man to beat Terence Crawford, despite really not being a natural welterweight to share, but your first fight at the weight, Oh, you, you're pound for pound number one. So, I mean, mm. yeah, I don't know why people aren't talking about it, but I'd quite like to to watch it. Um, yeah. But, yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing it. that. I'm not sure about Haney Stevenson out of all the options. I think that could be potential for a stinker. It's like that Spider-Man meme, you know, when they're pointing at each other. It'd be like sort of two Rigos pointing at each other or something. <laughs> I, the, the punch stats would be broken from the lowest ever thrown, I think. <laughs> 